Hey there, it's Michael Carter, and today we're looking at how to get the career you really want. Now everybody, they wanna have a meaningful career in their life. So what is the secret to being able to have that? Okay, are there things that people can do right away to help them achieve meaning in their career? Okay, the short answer is yes, of course there is. Now there are several principles that you can use in order to find a specific job or a career that you truly love. Okay, defining uh, meaningful for yourself, sadly, you know, most people, they're unable to make decisions about their jobs that will actually bring about the satisfaction they seek. Mostly because we haven't actually been taught to make these decisions yet. Okay, when we're first starting out with our careers, we usually make decisions based on the wrong criteria. Okay, we tend to do the things that only meet our immediate need for recognition, not those that help us really give a sense of personal satisfaction. Okay, so first one we're looking at is legacy. Now the actual accomplishments of your work, okay, the things that you want to achieve in your career are the legacy that you will leave. Now though, I mean, there's many, you know, smaller tasks that will need to be accomplished along the way. The evidence of your achievement is what makes up your legacy. For instance, one person might aspire to teach maybe like 50 children how to read within a year. Another might find it rewarding to help abuse women get resumes to find jobs. Now, how meaningful your career or job is will be a direct result of how closely you work to the front lines of your chosen field. Okay, so the next one we're looking at is mastery. Now, the talents that you're working on to improve. Okay, for instance, if you know, maybe you're a writer and you use your talent in order to write advertisements for products that you believe in or that you might use your skill to write uh, informational reports. Okay, the talents are skills that you have and are actively working to improve on on a regular basis. Okay, the catch is that you, you really need to be working toward mastering a talent that you actually love doing. Okay, the next one we're looking at is freedom. Okay, there's many types of freedom in life. Some find it, you know, making a high income that allows them to travel maybe to exotic locations. Others uh, might find freedom in being able to work their own hours and, you know, whenever they want to work. Now, if you know the type of lifestyle that you want to live, okay, this helps you make choices that, you, that can really get you into that lifestyle. Okay, the next one is alignment. Now, it's really important that your, your lifestyle and your beliefs align with those of your colleagues and maybe your manager. Okay, the actual beliefs and priorities of those that you work with can really impact your career choices. Now, if you don't like the people that you're working with or for, this can prevent you from moving forward. Okay, now obviously the contents of these principles, they're going to change you know, based on each individual. So it's gonna be important for you to make a list of, you know, things that mean the most to you and then you wanna prioritize them. Okay, the list will become really the most important and valuable thing you have when you're presented with possible advancement opportunities because then you can use it to evaluate those opportunities and then make an informed decision. The next one is shape hypothesis. Okay, deciding what things are or really mean the most to you, they can be, it can be, I mean, it can be difficult if you've never thought about this before. Okay, so one way to determine is, you know, you want to think about all the tasks that you've performed at work, maybe in a given day. You want to evaluate how you felt and just make a list of those things that made you feel the happiest. Now also, make a list of things that really frustrates you on a daily basis. Okay. Now, once you have these lists, go over them and see, maybe you can determine some of the things that are the most meaningful to you. Write down your hypothesis, and then you can run an experiment on them. Okay, so the next one we're looking at, of course, leads into experimentation. Now, you want to have your hypothesis done. Okay, it's time for you to run a test or two on them. Okay, you should look at your existing job and see you know, if there's any ways for you to incorporate your experiment into it. Okay, so you might try asking if you can work remotely for a month 
or you know worse things well they're going to just say no okay not a big deal if that's not possible then you could try joining groups that are dedicated to the things that you've identified as potentially meaningful to you now be sure that you play you know close attention and ask a lot of questions so that you can get really good ideas um, as to whether it might fit your idea that's meaningful or not okay now from a you could actually form a decisions committee okay this is just thinking outside the box um, there's no need for you guys to have to go through uh, experimentation alone okay you should pick maybe a few colleagues or a few close friends that you can discuss your findings with on a regular basis in order to narrow down your decisions now the people that you choose for your committee um, it should be those that have an opinion of their own and not people who follow the norm and just, you know, do as they're told, okay? Uh, you want independent thinkers. Though you should let your spouse know what you're doing, you might not want to add them to your committee, okay? They might not be able to be in the best position to help you determine an outcome. Try asking a, you know, former coworkers or bosses to help you out. Now, you might also ask friends from long ago let them know what you're doing and then keep them up to date on how things are going. Okay, now aim for long term. This experimentation isn't designed to simply, you know, get a job right away. Okay, it's designed to help you analyze your life and make decisions as to what type of lifestyle that you want to find yourself living, say in five years or 10 years or longer. Okay, this is really important for you to find the job that is going to get you started down that path. But you also need to aim for the long-term solution. Okay, when you're ready in a career and it's possible to make career changes, even when you are knee-deep in one career, okay, now although you may find it difficult, it's possible to make a change mid-stride. Okay, it might take you a little longer to get headed in the direction you want to go in, but it can be done. Now, it may mean perhaps making a few personal sacrifices in the beginning, okay? But knowing that you'll be doing that job that you love instead of a job that, you know, maybe you're just stuck with and this will make all the difference in the world for you. Now, get your money in order, okay? The main reason people say they can't change their career is that they just won't make enough money if they make the change. Now, one way you can make it possible is to create a budget that uses less money. Okay, it might mean making sacrifices at first, and it probably will, but the reward will soon outweigh the sacrifices that you make. Now, a few ways that you might be able to lower your monthly expenditure are, for instance, um, you know, maybe move into a smaller house. Get rid of one car if you have to. Okay, be very disciplined not to overspend when it's not necessary. Now, next thing is take the time. Everyone can benefit from taking the time to consider, you know, what they want from a job. Okay, you should schedule a time to reflect on your job and the expectations on a regular basis. Now, you don't need to spend a large amount of time on this task, okay? Only about maybe an hour or so every couple weeks. And many times, the simple act of thinking about it can get you working on making those changes. Okay, so the takeaway principles from this. Okay, we look at the, the do's. Okay, take time to create a prioritized list of elements of what you want to consider to be a meaningful job. Okay, invite maybe three or four people to be your committee for evaluating your decisions towards your perfect job. Okay, remember it's your perfect job, not someone else's. Run your experiment to help you determine what your perfect job looks like, either in your current job or it could be completely outside of the work you're doing. Now the don'ts, okay? Don't think about what you will be able to do in your next job, okay? Think about what you can use from your current position um, that will benefit you in your next position, okay? Don't let a current career, for gosh sakes, prevent you from making a change to the career that you really wanna be doing, okay? Even those mid-career, um, you know, they, they can make a change and it will be the, for the better in their lives, guys. You got to be, you got to not be scared of your decisions. Okay? Don't live outside your means so that you're not financially able to make a change when you want to. Now, if you stick to your budget, you're going to be able to make changes to build a meaningful career. 
Thanks for watching. I'm Michael Carter from moneymike.com, and we'll see you soon.